The Berkshires, a place known for its rolling hills, its sprawling estates, and a prime spot for extravagance and luxury. A year-round destination frequented by rich individuals desiring an escape from big city life. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Today, we are taking you through the Berkshires, a part of western Massachusetts drenched in pastoral beauty and opulence, and a place you don't want to miss. Situated midway between Boston and New York City, in what is known as a thriving art center, with ample outdoor activities, and magnificent scenery, it's quite obvious why the decadence of the Gilded Age have found its way here. While the heyday of the Gilded Era has surely died down, many of its opulent Berkshire's mansions still stand today, and they continue to give visitors a glimpse into this glamorous and most captivating time in history. So if you've got a few minutes to spare, you're welcome to join us on our tour of the most sumptuous of estates in this most majestic part of Massachusetts. And best of all, most are open to the public, so you can experience their beauty from the inside and out. So without further ado, here are the top 10 Gilded Age mansions of the Berkshires. Number 1. Naumkeg. This shingle-style country cottage used to be the summer home of Joseph Hodges Choate, a prominent New York City attorney, and his wife Caroline Duchess Sterling Choate, an artist and advocate for women's education. The 44-room home was completed in 1886, and sits on eight acres of elegant terraced gardens surrounded by 40 acres of woodland, meadow and pasture. Some of Naumkeg's gardens include the Afternoon Garden, the Evergreen Garden, the Chinese Garden with the Moon Gate, and the Blue Steps. Today, you can visit this historic home and public garden at specific times of the year for guided house tours, for self-guided tours of its seven formal gardens and landscaped grounds, to attend some of its annual festivals, or just to take in the scenery and do absolutely nothing. Number 2. The Mount. This pristine Lenox, Massachusetts estate was home to none other than the famed writer Edith Wharton and her husband. Built in 1902, after selling her cottage in Newport and becoming bored with Newport High Society, she considered this grander and less ostentatious cottage her first real home. The 50-acre estate consists of the Georgian Revival main house, meticulously kept Italian gardens, and a stable. After the couple moved out in 1911, the home changed hands several times, and was eventually purchased by Edith Wharton Restoration in the late 90s. The organization succeeded in restoring the mansion and its gardens back to their original splendor, and is now one of the very few national historic landmarks dedicated to women. Today, the fully restored mansion is open to the public for tours, lectures, and cultural events, and it welcomes over 50,000 tourists to the Berkshires each year. Number 3. Wheatley. This Italianate villa was built in 1893, as a wedding present from real estate tycoon Henry H. Cook to his daughter. Originally 250 acres, today this Mediterranean revival estate sits on 22 acres on top of a knoll, surrounded by a Frederick Law Olmsted-designed park, with lakes and mountains. The property was later owned by the Boston Symphony Orchestra between 1949 and 1957, and since 1976 it has served as a hotel. Today, Wheatley is internationally known as a peaceful and secluded five-star country resort with 19 guest suites. You can visit for a luxurious stay or to host a memorable event of your own. Number 4. Ventford Hall. This Jacobean revival-style home was built in 1893 for George and Sarah Morgan, sister of J.P. Morgan. The 28,000-square-foot country cottage includes over 50 rooms, 17 fireplaces, and sits on 26 acres of gardens and landscaped grounds. After several changes in ownership, falling into disrepair, and coming close to being demolished in the early 1990s, it was rescued in 1997 by the Ventford Hall Association. Though still a work in progress, the non-profit has done much to restore the home back to its original condition, and today has established a National Gilded Age Museum within its walls. You can visit the museum daily, to enjoy self-guided tours of the mansion, or to attend a variety of cultural events throughout the year. Number 5. Windhurst Manor. Built in 1894, for wealthy New York merchant John W. Sloan and his wife Adela, this spectacular Tudor-style cottage sits on 256 acres of landscaping, designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, of New York's Central Park. The home was later purchased by millionaire Edward Cranwell in 1929, and for many years was known as the Cranwell Preparatory School. Throughout the years, acres were either auctioned off or donated, while at times the estate was joined with that of the nearby estates to form the Berkshire Hunt and Country Club. And at other times newer mansions were built on the estate. Today, this scenic country estate is now a luxurious Hyatt property, and is also known as the Miraval Berkshires Resort and Spa. 
It features 10 unique suites at the Windhurst Mansion, Cottage and Carriage House stays, an 18-hole golf course, fine dining, and of course, breathtaking views of the Berkshires. Number 6. Elm Court. Right next door to Windhurst Manor, is another colossal estate belonging to John Sloan's brother. Built in multiple stages between 1885 and 1902, this shingle-style Tudor revival was once the summer retreat of New York businessman William Douglas Sloan and his wife Emily Thorne Vanderbilt. The property features the 106-room cottage, 34 greenhouses, a butler's cottage, a gardener's cottage, barns, stables, carriage houses, and of course landscape designs by Frederick Law Olmsted. Heirs of the estate later turned Elm Court into a popular inn throughout the 1950s. When the inn closed in the late 50s, the property fell to neglect and vandalism for several decades, but was restored by a great-granddaughter of the Sloan Vanderbilts in the early 2000s. Out of all the Berkshire cottages, this was the last to have remained in the family of its original owners. It was finally sold out of the family in 2012, to a Colorado-based developer. Sadly, their plans to turn the mansion and its 90 acres into a luxury resort never panned out, due to litigation and the recent pandemic. Today, the property still sits unoccupied, and was recently sold once more, for $8 million. Number 7. Blantyre. On the opposite side of Windhurst is another enormous estate that was once the home of Robert Warden Patterson, a wealthy New York businessman and a friend of the Sloan brothers. He modeled and named the Tudor-style mansion after his mother's ancestral home in Blantyre, Scotland. Built in 1902, it quickly became the place of lavish parties and grand dinners throughout the Gilded Age and the turn of the century. With the introduction of the income tax, and an end to the Golden Era, the mansion changed hands multiple times, and eventually fell into disrepair. It was purchased in 1980 by the wealthy Fitzpatrick family of the Country Curtains catalogue business, who restored and reopened the estate as an elegant hotel and restaurant in 1981. Today, Blantyre is a luxury Forbes five-star resort, on 110 acres of lush landscaping and woodlands. In addition to the top-notch service, it features super posh guest accommodations, an award-winning spa, casual and fine dining options, as well as a plethora of activities to take part in. Number 8. The Bellefontaine Mansion. This white marble and brick mansion is possibly one of the most elegant of the Berkshire summer cottages. Completed in 1897 as a summer home for merchant Gerard Foster and his wife Jane Van Nest, it is a copy of Louis XVI's Petit Trianon at Versailles. The mansion came complete with elaborate gardens, and a magnificent collection of 1,800 statues scattered throughout the property. Shortly after Gerard Foster's death in 1945, the interior of his beloved Berkshire's home was destroyed by fire. The mansion was later sold to a religious order who rebuilt it, and used it as a seminary for boys until 1978. It is during those years that many of the estate's famous statues mysteriously disappeared. In 1987, the property was purchased by Mel and Enid Zuckerman, owners of the world-famous Canyon Ranch Health Spa Resort in Tucson. They spent $40 million restoring the Lennox Mansion to its original grandeur, and eventually transformed it into a second Canyon Ranch Resort. Today, the estate has a new owner, but is still otherwise known as Canyon Ranch Lennox. In addition to the Bellefontaine Mansion, it consists of a luxurious inn, an enormous spa complex, and 120 acres of grounds for you to explore. Number 9. Tanglewood Music Center. This 210-acre site sits between the towns of Lennox and Stockbridge, and consists of not one, but two fabulous mansions. The first mansion Highwood, was built in 1847 for the poet Samuel G. Ward. It was one of the first cottages to hit the scene at the time. Two years later in 1849, a second mansion named Tanglewood was built next door. It belonged to William Aspenwald Tappan and his wife Caroline Sturgis Tappan. Slowly but surely, during the Gilded Age, the Berkshires became a popular classical music venue for the ladies and gents of high society. By 1937, the Tappan family gifted their property to composer and music director Sergei Kusevitsky, turning it into the summer home of the Boston Symphony Orchestra and the Tanglewood Music Center by 1940. In 1986, the center acquired the adjacent Highwood estate, thereby increasing the property by 40%. The two estates combined, form a vast campus boasting several concert halls, a learning institute, acres of landscaped grounds for you to explore, and of course the two mansions which house the visitor's center as well as restaurants. Today, the campus hosts the annual Tanglewood Music Festival featuring musicians from all over the world, and receives over 350,000 visitors each year. And finally we come to number 10. Chesterwood. 
This 150-acre estate was the summer home and studio of American sculptor Daniel Chester French, best known for his statue of Abraham Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial. Completed in 1901, the estate includes the two-and-a-half-story Georgian Revival Mansion, the studio, a 19th-century barn that is now a museum gallery and visitor center, a caretaker's residence, a smaller studio, and other small outbuildings. Stunning grounds feature contemporary sculpture, a country gentleman's garden, a path meandering through the woods, and panoramic views of the mountains. After French's death, his daughter gifted the estate to the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Today, Chesterwood is a house museum and gallery that you can visit from May through October for self-guided tours of the studio and grounds, to attend artistic and literary events, or to even host your own garden event. And that's it for the top 10 Gilded Age mansions of the Berkshires. So, which of these estates did you like the most? Which ones are you looking forward to visiting? As usual, there are probably a few that we missed. If so, you're more than welcome to let the rest of us know which ones they are. Anyway, if there's anything else you would like to mention about this topic, feel free to share it with us in the comments below. Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see each other next time.